Hey everyone, and welcome to Backseat Sports. I'm Josh, that is Caleb, and guys, this is what we've all been waiting for. The season predictions, the way too early seasons predictions for Nebraska football. We're all sitting here, you know, quarantined, trying to live our best lives, and I, you know, I don't want to speak for Caleb. We're bored. We're Josh bored. and I have watched every <laughs> single Husker football game ever recorded in man history. That's all we've done over this over oh, our wow. quarantine. Every single one. And after we have dissected every single Husker football game since 1896. Yeah. Oh we're yeah. Now we're now ready what... to start our videos, our predictions videos for this year. That's Quiz the only me. reason why we've only had one video in the past like you know, two months, whatever. But yeah, but to be fair though, I did actually go back and watch. I was watching the 2010 highlights literally two days ago. I, was, I watched uh, the depressing Texas, Nebraska Big 12 championship f like three days ago. So did I kind of need a I good cry. That one always gets me. Yeah. Yeah. I had some tissues nearby just to, like, you know, clear up the tears from my eyes because it was sad and depressing. But today we're predicting what hopefully will be a less sad and depressing. 2020 it's gonna, seasons. It's going to be great. <laughs> Brace for impact. Brace for impact as we go through this one today. But um, we are going to have a fun time. I think it's going to be interesting. We're going to be going through game by game, predicting each game. Obviously, there's, there's a lot can change the next few months. Hopefully, there's a season. Obviously, we don't even know if that's a guarantee yet. And uh, going through all the matchups, we will have a best, most likely, and worst case scenarios. And, of course, there will be some variations depending on who's starting at quarterback and JD Spielman and a few other things. So, uh, with that said, I think we can get right into it. Caleb, you can have the honor of taking us away with the first game of the year. Oh, and it's a good one. We jump right it into is. Big Ten play. No cupcakes for us this year. Yeah. Mm -mm, no Western, like, Southern, Eastern, Northern like Valley last week. State, Grand Canyon, <laughs> Sister Mary's for us. We start right off with Purdue. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like we said last week, I mean, there's no warm-up game for any quarterback, whoever is starting, whether it's Martinez, whether it's Luke, whether it's Vedral, whether it's Smothers, who knows, whether it's me, you know. <laughs> jo Josh may be three foot seven, but he's got a cannon of an arm, let me tell you. Three foot seven? You don't have legs, he's Josh. Disrespect you don't, oh, you don't have legs. We only are you, you our top can, halves. That's true. You guys we out don't there walk. cannot confirm whether or not I have legs. They can't. They don't know. They have no they clue. They have no idea. Yeah. It just, who knows who's starting at quarterback. We're getting right into it with the Big Ten matchup. Caleb, what do you got, baby? What are your thoughts? Well, Sinlar and Rondell Moore are now back from the dead after yes. the lucky, very lucky Minnesota game where Minnesota got to play them without you, those two things. Yeah, well, I'm looking at you, Minnesota. Last you year. overrated pieces of garbage. <laughs> I'm, I'm starting hot. I'm starting hot this year. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, no. I've Caleb already right made enemies. I, he made yeah, a lot Minnesota of enemies fans, last year. You three yeah. people that like Minnesota that are here, just know I hate your football team. We're not even Go on home. the Minnesota game yet. We're literally talking about Purdue and Caleb's <laughs> ranting about Minnesota. Guys, I am so sorry. Okay, Caleb. Minnesota. Elijah Sindler, Rondell yes, Moore are back. All they're right? back. I'm terrified yeah. of that. Rondell Moore is a stud. You, I, me, everyone who watches college football already knows that. Ohio State definitely knows that. Yeah. Uh, man, and they have another good wide receiver too in David Bell. We saw that this year as he kind of got to develop. Uh, without yeah. Rondell Moore, he got 86 targets, you know, 86 receptions this last season. So I think they're a good team. I'm terrified. I have no clue. With shortened practice, shortened seat, you know, with everything that's happened thus far, I do not think we come out great in this game. We have not started out a season, yeah, you know, great yet. So I don't think we win this one. Uh, oh, I do like the fact gosh. that it's at home, though. But I you, think the seriously? energy. Seriously? Yeah, I'm sorry. That's. I don't think we'll win. Oh my god. Our defense. Okay, guys, I forgot to mention. Caleb is just like. You know, like when you go through like a breakup and you just like you, you're just in denial and like you can't like you just can't process things and you're just angry and frustrated and but the bejeebies are scaring you out. That's what Caleb's got going right now. So he's gonna be sad and depressed. Yeah, <laughs> I have no clue what Josh. 
We're going to lose. It's going to be a close game. I We're probably okay. going to have a first half lead. We're probably going to be up by a lot. I'm going to think, yeah, it's in the bag. <laughs> Woo, let's drink some Chardonnay and move on to game two. And then we're just going to fall asleep, as we always do. So, and everybody's going to hate themselves. I did forget to mention. I, I should have mentioned this at the beginning of the video. So uh, the early, obviously not all websites have their predictions out for over, their over-unders mm -hmm. out for the odds true, so true. far. But um, a few do. Like Caesars Casino does have theirs out for most division one teams at this point we are at six and a half so uh not not ideal that is uh not ideal obviously last Feels year we were right. at i think nine by odd shark um over unders most websites has around nine last year eight and they half. drank the kool-aid and so did we we all we, drank because vegas usually wins they usually take the money yep not and this year not last Purdue's year. at five so we would be favored to win this game based off of vegas and everyone else. I'm actually a little surprised to produce at five. I feel like it's a little bit unfair to them. I think they're more realistically at six, six seven, and a half. Seven, yeah. Oh, Caleb has them at seven. Of course. Well, I mean, no, actually, no, no, you six, should. No, over, under. Uh, six over, and a half. Yeah, six and a half yeah, feels I think good. Six and a half feels more fair for Purdue. I'm actually surprised they're at five. But they do have a 20. They had, they had like 20 freshmen on their, like their two deep roster like last year, basically. Like that's pretty insane. Um, yeah. Oh, we didn't even mention Bob Diaco is their new defensive coordinator. Hi, Bob. How's it going? <laughs> Purdue, that's pretty nice, man. I hope it's It'll going well. It'll be nice well. to see him on that sideline. I can't wait for you to throw temper tantrums because you're not doing well and then just not show up to the press conference. I'm pumped for you. I can't wait for you to say nonsense. You should keep thanking Kelly over at Notre Dame for blessing <laughs> you going. with a defensive <laughs> coordinator job because... He was clearly the going. defensive genius, and huh. you don't know anything. Oh, my. Caleb's looking to create beef with Bob Diaco, too. He's really <laughs> on fire today. Okay, Caleb, are you sure you don't want to change? You have us losing to Bob Diaco right now. I know. It's sad. It's sad, but we don't have a defense either. Okay, so wait, wait, I can't wait, even wait, talk. Wait, wait, I can't wait, even wait, talk. Wait, we don't we, have a defense. We, we, haven't even, we, we literally said last week we were going to talk about this. Is this your prediction with Adrian Martinez or with Luke? Or does it not matter? This is it with Adrian Martinez. I 100% think he's going to get the start week one. Okay, so we spent way too much time on this first game, or else this video is going to take like an hour and a half. I think Luke will be starting, and I have us winning this game. So. It'll be close, because I think Purdue's going to be a pretty reasonable, pretty good team this year. I actually, I'm really surprised by the five, the five win. That's actually really over shocking under. too. Yeah, I think they're going to be a pretty good team, but I think we're going to win this first game of the year at home. Luke, this is such a big game. Such a big game. There's so much on the line at home. First game of the year. We got to win this. We're going to win it. All right. We're 1 0. Central Michigan is up next. I, I think it's pretty clear cut. I, I think we, we're we going to win this game. I think we're in good shape to win this. Obviously, the MAC teams can, sometimes can be trip ups, as we have seen in the past, but I feel pretty good about it. I'm not going to go too much in depth on this one. Obviously, we don't, neither of us know too much about Central Michigan at this point. The Chippewas. They have but a great I, I have us winning it. I have us winning. I think it's going to be close. It's going to be terrifying and close. I still have Adrian starting this game after that loss. I never think that's going to happen. All right. Well, I'll be interested going. to see when Adrian doesn't start for you, right. if that's oh. the thing. All right. <laughs> yeah, keep us updated. All right. Next game. Okay. okay, we have us winning. So, in our currently, I have us 2-0. Caleb has us at 1-1. One one. Then we got SDSU game three at home as well. Obviously, I got State. us winning. South Dakota State. I got us winning. I am horrified of this game, to be honest. Because, uh, again, I have Adrian starting, and... They are back. When, the last they were here, this, we should have had. We should look this up. But they were here at some point in the past decade. Well, I mean, 12, 13, 14, 15 in there. Somewhere in there. Somewhere yeah. in that. And that was a close. You game, got us but, winning. But yeah, I feel like this is a, a McNeese State situation. They're good. They're actually decent. They're gonna oh, want to play. Dude. This game is gonna be early in the morning, which we don't seem to show up well when it's a small <laughs> team early in the morning. Like. I, I don't know. I think we're going to win, nervous but once again. it's close, and we're not going to be just happily just stomping all over a D1A school like we should. Yeah, man. I think we should be fine. I got us winning. So, again, we're, we're currently 3-0 in my situation. Good start to the year so far. Caleb, we're 2-1. Um, Cincinnati's the fourth game, again, at home. This is a, this is a little bit of a scary one, I will I will admit. A um, little bit. They were a good team last year. They were a good team last year. They, were, didn't, they cracked the top 25. They have an eight and a half win over under from Vegas this year. So they're going to be a pretty good team. Obviously, you know, they're in the AAC, give or take 
a game or two, depending on how you feel about that conference. This is going to be a little bit scary. This is where the offense has to be clicking. I think Cincinnati is going to have a, a pretty good defense overall. Put up a real fight. I think it's going to be a, a tested, close win. I have us at 4-0. and Depending on what happens in the next few months with Cincinnati and depending on what happens with our starting quarterback situation, I could see this going the other way. Caleb? <laughs> Adrian oh, no. still starting. and We lose this game. It's going to suck. And I'm I'm thoroughly nervous by this. Caleb, they beat, they what's the top, opposite of drinking beat, the Kool Aid? They beat top 25 teams last year, but good defense. So I'm nervous about this. And at home, man, you're gonna have us lose the, two we, of our first. We four lost games to Northern Illinois at home. Oh man, Come this on, is horrifying. Man. This hurts. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm terrified. I'm terrified of this game. It's I'll admit, loss. of course, it, it's a close one for sure. I they're going to be a good team, so we cannot underestimate them just because they're Cincinnati. That sends us into Northwestern at Northwestern, which, in some people's opinions, might be a good thing. It's <laughs> a good we thing. Seem, we seem to be playing better in Northwestern half the time than than, than at home against them. But I have us at four and zero currently, sitting pretty pretty nice. Caleb's got us at two and two with losses to Purdue and Cincinnati. I'm gonna have us. I think winning this game, I mean, you know, penalties last year were killer for Northwestern. They have a five and a half over under so far uh, at from Vegas. They have a new offensive coordinator. Obviously, I mean, they couldn't have been worse. <laughs> Their they offense couldn't could score not have points. Been. They could not it, score points. They they averaged 12.7 points per game in the Big Ten last year. That is that is tragic. That yeah, tragic. Yo, this is absolutely horrible. They were so bad. I mean, they are returning some pieces, and like it'll be interesting to see how they're their offense shapes up this year with the new offensive coordinator. You know, like Drake Anderson looked like a decent running back last year and everything else. Bowser but, too, yeah. Yeah, and like Bowser's returning as well. So I think they should be at least better, but I don't know how much better. They have a five and a half over under, like I said. I'll take us to win the game. I feel decent about it. So uh, we're now five and oh. Yeah, I mean, I have us winning this game. It, we're going to have a very large Nebraska crowd. You and know, if we're winning on the road, that's big news for Scott Frost. It's pretty much a home game, though. Every year it is. Right. So it's right. it's always a great time. Tickets are like two dollars, two dollars and a road trip to you know to Chicago. What Should a be a good time. time. Yeah. It always is a good time. Uh, it's gonna be a close game, but I still like us here. And uh, Adrian is still starting, by the way. <laughs> All right. Illinois is up next at home. Um, Illinois has got a five game over under from Vegas. So you know they expect him to be you know basically worse than last year which is interesting you know this was a close game for us last year obviously they went on to beat wisconsin and upset yeah. them and have an interesting season a better season than normal for illinois let's say that um so maybe they're trending in the right direction you know they led the league in forced turnovers last year their defense was a menace kind of annoying i i think we should be fine in this game yeah i mean it's mitigating turnovers for us that's the big yeah. thing that let us let them straight into it that last year Adrian had his best game of the whole la of yep last season against Illinois to lead us to this. But yeah, I I still feel confident with Illinois. I think they, the defense they, should suck. It should be bad. Although Lovey Smith is a good defensive coach, so he'll scrap something together. It, it's Maybe. always the it's the offensive side of the ball that's usually the worry for him. So, but I'm glad this yeah. is a home game. If this was away, I'd be extremely nervous. Oh, I, I think we'll win it. <laughs> Somehow we're at six and zero right now, and we're running into Rutgers next. Feeling good about this. this is one of our road games. Thank goodness. That's really nice. Greg Shiano's back, which was, you know, that would, he's trying to bring Rutgers back to their quote unquote glory days when they had talented teams, NFL it's gonna players. It's going to take some time. It's going to take time, though. This roster is bad. Bad. So we should be, we should be having a good time here. Win big. I have us winning big here. I think our offense should be rolling now. In my predictions, we're already rolling, but this should be a big win for us, uh, putting up points all over the place. I'm excited for this game. This is the one. This is like my circle game of the of the year. I'm pumped. I can't wait. Just gonna sit back and watch <laughs> like our some Maryland football. game last year. It, yeah, like, it's exactly like Maryland. Except Maryland, I was nervous. We were both nervous. We thought we would win and win big. But a lot we, of people early say, on in the year had Maryland beating us. So. Yes, but we said we laughed. Remember, we were like Maryland oh, will yeah. not beat Nebraska. And we were right. Yes. But yeah, Rutgers is gonna be great. I'm excited for this game. So will Martinez still be playing here? Oh, 100 percent. He's starting. Bro, if he's starting by now, though, how is he ever going to get benched? But then you're like, oh, here we go at Ohio State. <laughs> <laughs> you at ready Ohio for this State, one? They have an over-under of 11 wins. Obviously, they're going to be a good team. I mean, no one's doubting that. They're going to be good. They probably hey, have a Heisman. No they Chase have Young, debatably though. the Heisman favorite. You no know, Chase at Young, quarterback. Though. True. No Chase Young. Whoop-de-doo. 
<laughs> they're going to be just fine. We have to imagine we're going to lose this game. Get smacked. It, in my scenario, we're seven and zero. Oh, we're probably going to be ranked in like the top twelve. Why do you have to do or this? To Fifteen. Me? So like, we're going to get. It's going to be a prime time game, and you know exactly how the script goes. And just, we just get walked. <sighs> probably. Absolutely beat. <sighs> probably. Our defense, again, we haven't really talked much about how our defense is actually going to be in this uh, video. I think our defense will be nearly the same as last year. Our secondary will be better. I 100% believe that. We'll do like a full breakdown video and things like that about the defense moving forward. So we I think our defense for is sure. going to be worse. I mean, our secondary is going to be better. Yeah, I mean, but sure, we, we lost we Lamar Jackson. Whole, we, we lose our whole defensive line, though. Pretty yeah, much but I mean, it. our linebackers our line can't back be worse. No, they they can't be worse. They can pretty no. much be worse. They can be the same. Oh, yeah. No, they can't. Yeah, they can. They can 100 percent be the same. We sure, fill, we lose we our. We, we didn't fill enough pieces in, bro. Oh my word! You can't you can't rip on our linebackers all of last season, and we lose one, and now suddenly we're we're gonna be worse. We bring in two JUCOs. I mean, Honus and Miller can only improve. We saw we saw them. I don't know. I've seen players push. not improve. Adrian Martinez. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, oh I'm scared. I'm thoroughly scared of our linebacking core. I have hope. I have hope that they're better. We haven't even talked about JoJo yet. I, we, we should have prefaced this as well probably before the beginning of the year. I do think JoJo's – or before the beginning of the video. I think JoJo's going to be starting as like an outside linebacker, which my would be hope, my hope, ideal. If, if everybody remembers, go back to when we were decent in 2010 with this guy named Eric Hag, And he – was, was he menace. had his own position and he was just a menace he wasn't really a sunday guy but this dude was insane because he was a lot like jojo just athletic not you know kind of in the in a tweener in between yeah kind of that safety our linebacker was talented and had guys who fit into the positions nowadays you gotta get him on the field every play yeah and eric Hag didn't really fit anywhere either but we just created his own position for him and said you know do what you will and we had we had a system for him. If we did something like that with Jojo Doman, who is our most talented defensive player, who has play. been debatably pr pretty much since he's been here, debatably, I think so. I think so. Cam Taylor, he, sure, he has upside. I think I still think that Jojo is our most talented. Yeah, he's he's definitely he's our most athletic. He's fast. He's strong. And I mean, but again, he, when, he when almost single handedly he almost single handedly helped us upset Ohio State. So. I think he's our best, our be, our best defensive player. But he's not seeing the field enough. And yeah, yes. He's basically if just he's playing starting, right if now. he's starting at linebacker or anywhere on the defense, and he sees almost a hundred percent of the snaps, then I feel really confident about this team going into it. Uh, yeah. Our defense getting better. But if he's doing the same thing, where he's seeing forty percent of the snaps, he's in there sometimes for some sets. It's not. It's not going to be enough. And. I don't get why the coaching staff doesn't trust JoJo enough. You know, they say, oh, he's, he's reckless. But just that pure athleticism and nose for the ball helps you so much more than it hurts you. And yeah. the good plays I mean, outweigh the bad by a lot. Yeah, I mean, our secondary will be Boodle, Cam Taylor, Williams, and Dismuke. And Braxton Clark as well there, who's going to probably be playing a lot of roles. I'm feeling really good about our secondary at this point. Obviously, like, losing Lamar isn't ideal. But, like, at the end of the day, he's still replaceable. He didn't tackle well. And I don't think he was much of a team player. And so I I, I really do think he's pretty replaceable. Yeah, I think he was a team I, player. I, I don't buy that. But he didn't tackle well. You can't say that. Oh, no. He did not tackle well. He was, I'll like, the worst tackle that. I've ever seen. Holy I don't know cow, about he's that. terrible. I've seen some pretty bad uh tackling over the past the five Riley years era, <laughs> under the mike Riley era yeah oh for sure but i i see our secondary and our linebackers taking at least significant at least somewhat significant steps forward in my opinion and then you know the d lines where potentially we could have a debate whether they're gonna actually be better or maybe even somewhat worse that's kind of where i'm at with it i i still think our defense should be fine moving forward this year ohio state we all we both think probably a pretty big loss that's our first loss of the year likely we in my scenario we'd be in like the top 12 losing that game and it'd be pretty depressing. We all kind of would assume it's going to happen. So, you know, hey, what? we're ready for it. Five and three for me. Heading in to Penn State at home. You know, if we're a good team, this becomes an interesting upset game considering we're at home. But I expect Penn State to be a really, really good team. At this point, they're going to be ranked inside the top 15 for sure. Potentially top 10. Our offense is going to, has so much talent, especially in the backfield. And... Uh, it'll be interesting to see, like, you know, quarterback play, like Sean Clifford, potentially, like, you know, how he'll play. I think we have, like, an outside chance at this game, but I'm not projecting us to win. We should lose. 
again, I think with our weekend defensive line, they had they ran four guys at running back last year, and they keep guys in healthy. They got a new yeah. freshman, Kazaya Holmes, as well. So with with like Brown and Ford and all those guys, they are just going to run it all over us. And, and they brought in Minnesota's offensive coordinator, who, if you didn't notice last year, figured out how to run the ball against us. us. <laughs> they, they, they literally just ran the ball on us. So yeah. I think we're going to lose big this game. I think we're going to get run all over the field. Again, I'm projecting us to lose. I'll say close. <laughs> I'm being a little bit more optimistic, obviously, than Caleb. Uh, I, I project us to be at least more improved than what Caleb is, obviously, at this point, if you haven't figured that out. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Oh, by the way, Martinez is still starting. What? Just started that Penn State game as well. Is he starting this Iowa game? No. At this point, he's thrown enough picks and fumbled enough and maybe yep. gotten hurt enough. Yep, where he's not starting. That we finally see McCaffrey, and ev I, I'm going to tell you the heat. By the time that he's at Penn State, when we're at five and four, like it's just immense. It's going to be insane. The whole Nebraska fan base is ready to just to throw. They're just upset at Scott Frost, and yeah. finally against Iowa. So we're five. Stuff. Here's the chance. We're five and four, staring down the barrel at Iowa, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. Yep. Basically. We need to win at least one to get in the bowl game. Ideally, we win two or th all three, obviously. His back's against the wall, and he starts Luke McCaffrey. He starts at Iowa. Yep, at Iowa. All right. I've had Luke McCaffrey this whole season so far. So we're currently 7-2, and two, losses to Ohio State and Penn State. All right, going into Iowa, at Iowa. Not an easy game, for sure. Iowa's win-loss, or uh, right now Vegas odds are at 7. So right on the dot at 7. Feels about right when you look at their schedule. I think they could probably be an eight-win team, but I wouldn't be surprised at all with the guys that they've lost if they're a five-win team. They might they might be bad, depending on how this, this plays out. I mean, you've lost Nate Stanley. You've lost uh, Tristan Wirfs, AJ Epinesa. Those are hard guys yeah, to replace. It's, it's, it's not easy for them at all. And well, I think it's definitely a rebuild year is in store. They got two back-to-back -back pretty good quarterbacks you know they got Bethard and Nate Stanley back-to-back -back. Iowa standards yeah that's yeah for that's... Iowa that's amazing and uh <laughs> yeah. I think you know and the nice thing is their offense was really bad but Nate Stanley was was a good enough game manager to keep him in games but yeah I am a little bit worried about Iowa's like receiving core I think they could be at least decent if not good I mean they still have Amir Smith Marset who was the guy who returned the kickoff for a touchdown against us and then did the same thing against USC and, and Iowa hadn't, hadn't had like a return in, I can't remember the stat, but years, years. Yeah. And so been, he's a playmaker. He's athletic. And it'll be interesting to see how they use them. Obviously, they had like like three tight ends who were all decent last year. No one like they've had, the, like the, who they've had in the past. Obviously, yeah. tight end you over there somehow in Iowa. I'll be interested to see how that offense comes together. Obviously, losing a guy like AJ Epinesa on the defensive side of the ball, you can't replace him. And then tr losing Tristan Wirfs on the offensive line, you cannot replace a guy like that. I expect it to be worse, and I have us finally beating Iowa. Same. I think Luke oh, McCaffrey starts, my goodness. and we win. We win this game. I'm excited. I think this is going to be the worst Iowa team we've seen since we've been in the Big Ten. So that's really exciting. And a Luke really McCaffrey exciting. Nebraska offense. And yeah, and just the recent, and just the excitement of him. Even though we are away, which terrifies me every single time, but we have yeah. Luke McCaffrey starting. And there's a different attitude. We got a little okay. bit more swag. All right, man. I got us at eight and two right now. You've got us at six and four. Yep. Rolling into Wisconsin inside Madison. Nine and a half win total for Wisconsin. They're going to be a good team this year. I mean, there's no way they're bad. They're going to have at least like eight, nine wins probably, <laughs> if not more. <laughs> really, really. They're, I'm not. I'm not convinced. I mean, I mean, you know, Cone, lost... Cone was very accurate last year. He was. I'll give him that. Especially in second but... half of the year. But they had Jonathan Taylor. That's and the Quintez big... Cephas. Yeah, so... And they lose both those guys. And I think it's the first time in a long time that we don't have a Wisconsin team oh, that gosh. has an insane running back. I don't know about back. that, dude. We'll see. Someone's but no, gonna but think about it. Jonathan Taylor... Someone's like... going to pop up. It's someone. It's just... It's like magic. They just it's like not. sprinkle the magic it's dust not. and suddenly one of their running backs becomes a god. Now, what truly terrifies me is they have a great, a great linebacking core. Oh, they yeah. had their defense all, is going like, to be good. Rand, Lattermuck, Sandborn, all those guys last year, They're like back. they were so good. They were all around the same spot in tackling. Yeah. They were really smart yeah. and they were impressive. But we did, we, 
better than we had before. We were better yes. with the linebackers. It Once seemed we got like we figured game. something out. We finally got. Wait, I felt like yeah. I just looked and at this. I just looked at what you have here. <laughs> Keep going. Go, <laughs> go. Yeah. No. I fi I finally think we win here. Wow. Uh, it's a win. It's a win. You for have us, us winning at Iowa and at Wisconsin back, back to back, to back games. games. Yeah. It's amazing. I really think Wisconsin is the worst. Their defense hasn't been as good since they've switched <sighs> defensive coordinators, and even though they got another year in with him. I, I don't know just, about that, dude. Their offense isn't as good, and and Chris is one-dimensional, and he loved running the football, and he'll do it again, but they don't have Jonathan Taylor, a freaking Heisman candidate running back, and they don't have Melvin Gordon. They don't have Monte Ball. It's not the same. They, I really think this year that it'll be a down year for Wisconsin without him. Unless, I mean, of course, they have some some running back out of the woodworks. But the thing is, Cone if they did, forward. if they would have, Jonathan Taylor would have been complimented last year by that running back. So unless he's a freshman, because jo Jonathan Taylor complimented some of those guys, and that's how it worked at Wisconsin. If you were that good, you saw the field. But Jonathan Taylor has been a one-horse back and like hasn't had any help. Like. The change of pace just wasn't there as much for them as it has been when they've had somebody coming up for them. So I'm I'm know. optimistic that they don't have somebody to that. I, I think we can keep it close or at least respectable, but I don't have us winning. I have us losing. So that puts us at uh, eight and three now. Eight and three for me. And Caleb's kind of sneak, sneaking up here. <laughs> sneaking up to me here, Caleb. Yeah, seven wins. Seven wins, huh? beaten yep. both Iowa and Wisconsin on the road, something that we have not done in quite some time <laughs> or ever for Wisconsin. All right, Minnesota, our last game of the year. Man, this is going to be interesting. I, I hate to admit it, but I think Wisconsin, I think Minnesota is going to be a good team this year. It does suck. Their over-unders at nine, and I think that's like spot on. Looking yeah. at their schedule, I think nine wins is. And who they're returning. Sure, they lose Tyler Johnson on offense, but they're returning – their six best offensive linemen, all quarterback, all their linemen, and they're Tanner returning. Morgan is Tanner freaking Morgan, accurate. Rashad he's, Bateman, he's dumb accurate. So both running backs. So much they miss Johnson, but they're they're still going to be a, a great. They're going to be hard. their offense is going to be good. Although yeah. they do lose their offensive coordinator, yes. they do. So there is hope. There is hope. Say that was he was the genius for it. You know, it's an Atlanta Falcons situation where Shanahan, he was the Shanahan, and he was the reason they were winning games. And he leaves, and PJ is not nearly as good as he was when he was there. Maybe. maybe. Then then maybe they only win seven games, and we do have a big, we have a good chance at this. But this is at home. So you have, us, home. you have us beating Iowa on the road, Wisconsin on the road. I think, but I think Minnesota's better than Minnesota both of those teams. At home? I think I think Minnesota's better than Wisconsin. I think that they're better. Then if I they better win Wisconsin. They're winning ten games. Then I have us losing close. This is weird because I feel like in your mind, maybe I mean maybe that's what it is. In your mind, if if Luke McCaffrey's starting, our our team suddenly starts clicking, like real clicking. Well, yeah, I just think there there again there'd be so much more confidence, and just again how bad Adrian Martinez was last year at times. How turnover prone, I mean, yeah, injury obviously. prone. At, the completion percentage wasn't there. When he did have pockets, he was indecisive and had happy feet. Just so many bad things. He's again, but the problem is he's good enough. He's just good enough where I think he can start for most of the season and we can win the the easy game, the games that we have won because he's a five. He won five games, right? I mean, yeah. Starter. Again, last year, if you look back at it, you can attribute most of our loss to Indiana, Purdue, and Iowa to quarterback play and or special team. If yes. you know Luke McCaffrey starting and our special teams is at least somewhat improved which it should be it should be and hopefully we got a new coach hopefully yeah <laughs> it should be I like that you could then swing those games last year turns into a pretty decent year at that point and uh we're all happy nebraska fans but again yeah, and so i like, think that's the I argument think that's so much of it our offense was so bad at times it literally stalled out oh yeah, Just, yeah. what was not and then special teams ended the games for us yeah and spe like the wisconsin game where we were actually having good success oh, yeah oh yeah uh, and the, and the other thing is our offense was has been so bipolar. And so maybe maybe that was Troy Walters thinking about it. Maybe that Possibly. was what it was. Um or maybe it's Scott Frost, but Lubbock knows how to how to you know iron how, how to better communicate with him, how to iron out those things. And maybe that's the difference. 
I, you know, yeah. okay. I just maybe there's more trust there. I had us at seven and five this year. Um, I think the Minnesota mm-hmm. game, there's a real chance for it. Uh, you don't feel? But, do you feel good about seven and five if Luke McCaffrey, like, if we start clicking, we beat Iowa I'm on the road? I'm pissed, but happy at the same pissed, time. Pissed for the first half because what what the season could have been? Is that what you're saying? Yes, because I feel like I don't think we have a chance against Ohio State unless it's something drastic happens. Or Again, Penn this is way too early. But I think Penn State, there would be a real chance. There would be a real if chance Luke's against starting. Penn State. I think Cincinnati, I feel way better about it if we start. I feel, yeah, Purdue. you know, some, or, and Purdue and Purdue. I feel way better about it if Luke starts. I feel a lot yeah. happier and Okay, right. and I, think, Joe Joe. I really think Wisconsin and Iowa are beatable this year. I love Wisconsin's defense. And I think their linebacking core is terrifying. Yeah. But but I don't think their offense is good. As as much as we saw Jack Cohn look good last year, I just I think so much of that is the threat of Jonathan Taylor. And just they literally ran play action so much. So of course to wrap this thing up, we want to do our best case scenario and our worst case scenario to pair with our actual predictions. Okay. So I'll start off. I think our best case scenario is again with Luke, with JoJo getting as much playing time as possible, and uh, you know with all things going the right way. Maybe I think JD we, coming back too. JD JD coming back would be great. In my predictions, I I was predicting this with JD not coming back. With JD coming back, with Luke starting, with JoJo getting the playing time, and then with things going our well way, I think nine and three is probably still our best case scenario. Losses to Ohio State, probably Penn State, and and then maybe either Minnesota or Cincinnati. You could maybe justify a ten and two there if Minnesota is not as good. Like it's an exterior thing, not an interior thing. With yeah. Minnesota not being as good, so you could maybe say a ten and two is the best case scenario there. Yeah. So I'll I'll, I'll give us there. Maybe a, a nine and three with a tiebreaker could be a best case scenario as well for us to make the Big Ten championship. What's your best case scenario? Yeah. Again, if Luke starts every game, I I think nine wins is achievable. Uh, and yeah. I think the best case scenario for that, yeah, is that nine and three. Although, say Minnesota is bad, because we're right now in Josh's our way too early predictions. We, we think assume Minnesota, Minnesota's winning nine or we, ten. Yeah, we assume they're they're pretty good. But if you know, say that again, like the offensive coordinator, he was the genius. Penn State's offense is really great, and Minnesota's is not nearly as good. Uh, then, you know, maybe it's yeah. ten. But you know, nine and three definitely seems like nine and three definitely seems. I like mean, best we case would, scenario. Every, every Nebraska fan would be at this point ecstatic with nine and three. I think. Yeah, like, we're, rele- we're re- relevant. We have a chance. And with the, the schedule, and with the schedule, that means we're game. beating. You know, probably at Iowa and in either Minnesota or at Wisconsin. And so. for the first time in Scott Frost coaching here in the third year, we finally win some games that matter. For yeah, once. and make and make a good bowl game. So. Yeah. That would be huge. Make that, a bowl three. game. That hasn't happened yet under Frost but, either. Yeah, make a bowl game. Not only a bowl game, but a good one. So that would be really, really great. A nine and three would be an awesome season at this point for us. All right. <laughs> Worst case scenario. Obviously, this means no JD. This means JoJo's playing, you know, about the same role we played this year. This means Adrian Martinez is starting in your scenario the whole season. What's the worst case scenario? I think it's four and eight, just like it was his first year. I think four wins is a serious reality if if that happens and you know we lose to purdue we lose to cincinnati i think illinois has enough and lovey smith always brings it that maybe we lose there ohio state Uh, penn state there's no chance then we lose to iowa again 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 and wisconsin Wisconsin, again and minnesota Minnesota. those are all i think in my mind all of those games are very very losable that that would definitely be the worst case scenario yeah but we've seen it already so i'm scary. i'm near on board with you there i mean i would say illinois no but five and seven is probably the worst case scenario and like it doesn't seem it's scarily not unlikely you know yeah, like it's it's scary close you, you can kind of see how it would happen pretty quick <laughs> yes you're like sadly right, we've well, had a lot of adrian plays exactly like happened. last year jd's not back if omar manning doesn't work out if our o-line is similar the, to this year if the, the juco defense, linebackers aren't as good as advertised if they're not as good as we think jojo doesn't play as much as we would like because he doesn't fit quote unquote anywhere on the field it, quickly how you could see a five and seven scenario happening but i do like if if the betting odd right now is at six and a half for nebraska i would bet on the over i think both of us might bet on the over you have us at seven yeah i mean it's, I have definitely, eight. it's definitely kind of a risky bet because we're really definitely close to that. I think this is the way too the early more, prediction. Yes, it is. And I'm definitely on the low side just because it's it's yeah. way too early. Seven is pretty dang likely. I'm being optimistic with eight for sure. 
Uh, that's where we're at right now, guys. Drop, of but, course, we but, know but, for But, but, if the good things happen, everything works out to plan. Hopefully, for the first time, the we see year. Scott Frost with some good, with a, some good, a good team. <laughs> Man, how fun would it be, dude? All right. Well, all right, everybody. Drop your comments down below. We know you have them for you. Of what course, are your you thoughts? always have your thoughts. But... We'd love to see him. We'll comment. You know, you know how we comment down below. And of course, we will see you in the next video. As always, I'm Josh. That's Caleb. This has been Backseat Sports. And we will see you next time. We out. Woo.